Look at this, friends. We're going to make a beautiful little rose. We're using Wool Ease by Lion Brand for the rose and for the stem. Using the green. Using the cranberry. This cranberry makes a beautiful rose. And we're using the Big Centro 48 pin. You can use the 22 pin Centro Addy. You could use a 46 pin Addy. Whatever. We're only ever using at the max nine stitches. Let's get started making this fun little project. We're starting off with three stitches. So, and we're going to be doing increases on one side. So I have one, two, three. Make sure when you're doing this that you hook under this peg right here and then come up into come up into the castle. When this grabs, you want to keep watching and make sure that this goes under. There we go. Under that loop right there. Now we know it's latched in. And we're going to do 10 rows. So my counter counts my rows every, it counts it when it comes this direction to the right and then it tells me what number I'm on when I'm going to the left. So right now it says I'm on row two going to the left and I'm going to do 10 rows. That's nine. I'm on 10. And now I'm heading down to the left and I'm going to increase one, go one, two bumps past my last stitch. And now go back and I'm going to do 10 rows. So I'm going to get to 20. Now I'm doing it by uh, my counter. You can certainly count, you know, every 10, you just know you're doing an increase. We're at four stitches right now. We're going to end up at eight stitches. So there, see, it showed me 19. I'm on 20. I'm going back. I'm increasing one. I'm on five stitches now. And I'm going to the count of 30 on my machine. I'm on 30. I'm going down. I'm increasing one. I'm at count of six stitches and I'm going to 40 now. And when I say I'm going to 40, that just means I'm going to my 40th row. Thirty-nine, forty. Going down, increasing one. I'm on seven. I'm going to fifty. Forty-nine, fifty. I'm on my eighth stitch increase, and you know what? I think I'm gonna go to nine stitches. So I'm doing. I'm at six. I'm going to sixty right now. Going to my sixty row counter. I'm on 60. I'm going to increase to my ninth stitch. 
increase to the ninth stitch and then go back and forth and I'm going to finish at 70 rows instead of 80. If I went to 10 stitches, I would be at 80. But I'm going to go to 70. Okay, I'm on my 70th row. I want to finish the 70th row right there. I am going to cut a long tail. And now we're going to start casting off. So the rose is already all knit. You know, five minutes to knit the rose. Now it will take a couple minutes to just do our cast off and finishing. So pick up those stitches on the cast off edge. You're going to be gathering the cast off edge. You're going to be gathering your cast on edge, but it's just going to be, you know, a, just pick it up and it's going to get gathered automatically. There we go. So right now we have a long skinny triangle, a very long skinny triangle that took us five minutes to do. I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to pull my cast off string here and I'm going to pull on my knitting. Kind of just pop those stitches all nicely. Now we have our cast off string here. We're going to go along this, the edge that your cast off string is closer to. So you're, you could be going through your increase edge or you could be going through your decrease edge, depending on where you, where you decided to stop. I am just going through that actual selvage edge. That means just your outermost row of, or column of stitches. We're just going to run down just a quick running stitch. This is not going to be seen. It's going to be hidden in all of your lovely swirly goodness of your rows. And what I would, what I'd suggest if you were making a dozen roses is go ahead and just knit all of your triangles first, you know, knit all of the rose bodies first and then sit in front of the telly <laughs> and do this quick little running stitch all the way down the end. All you want to do is make sure that your running stitch ends up at the narrow point. I'm going to just draw in that cast on edge. I'm not stitching it off. I want that to end up on the outside. So when I pull my long tail, look at this, it's already starting to swirl. When I pull that long tail, see how it's already swirling? And now we've got this lovely corkscrew. And if you look, it's already turned that outside edge petal. It's already turned that outside edge petal for you. Make sure that your tail from the, from the cast on is to the outside. You're going to use that to tie off. And then just twist, poke your working tail all the way through to the outside. And we've got a rose. Now, part of the cool, the, the cool fun factor of my little rose is that I do have them on long stems or long ish stems. So I'll show you how to do that. But first we do need to go through the back and into the center. To gather up that center bit right there, I like to, to stitch over it and pull it down to the inside a little. 
it makes it get a little bit of shaping right in there. And then pull on your knitting. This is like sculpting without getting your hands all goopy with clay. <laughs> so look at that. I've got a pretty little rose. Lots of petals. It only took five minutes of knitting. And just, just a couple stitches on the outside. It's ready for you to go ahead and put a uh, clip on the back of it and make it into a brooch or a pin that you can uh, attach to your coat or to a hat, to a cowl, a scarf. And I like to kind of pull my, my stitches a little bit so that I can go back and forth a few times. Like that. Now it's not going to come unpopped. It's not, see, I can pull on these. They're not going to come un, undone. And I can tie it off with that thread at the back from the cast on edge. So now we've done our cast on, our cast off. And I'm going to show you really quick how to attach this to a straw to make it into a long stem. If you don't want to do this step, that's perfectly fine, but it's a way to make a fun little display, a bouquet of your flowers. So I'm going to take my needle off. This is just a um, skinny drink straw. You can use a milkshake straw, whatever you've got. I have a piece of, this is just thin craft wire, and I'm threading it through my straw. And it's folded over completely, so I don't have to worry about um, the loop coming undone because the ends are both coming out here. This is just like one of those uh, yarn needles with the, the wire on the, on the end, but we're making it into a giant threader. So now we're going to pull, and as we pull, we're going to pull that all the way through. So we've got that yarn all the way through. We're going to bring it back up to your cast on tail, and I'm going to just tie those together. So just tie those two tails together. And I actually like to bow the, the straw just a bit because then it will have a little bit of tension when I get it turned around here just a bit to get it to poke into the bottom of the rose. So I'm going to take this and kind of poke it into the rose just a little bit. And now I will take a piece of green yarn and I'm going to do the kind of hidden end. So I'm leaving a tail up here at the top to grab onto. I'm coming down to the bottom and I'm making a loop. And I'm leaving that loop kind of long. I'm not cutting off any of the rose tails. All right, there's a reason, there's a reason. You'll see it in just a second. And now I am going to go ahead and wrap this around the straw, around all the yarn, except the green tail. Leave that out. Wrap it around all the yarn from the rose. Just makes the stem a little bit thicker and it doesn't feel as plasticky. You can be more careful with your wrapping and I'll show you how to tighten that up in just a second. Tighten the flower on the end of the stem. You could make this into a boutonniere. You could make it into a bouquet. You can make it a single red rose and 
lay it at somebody's dinner table, um, dinner spot. I'm just wrapping this down. I still have all that loop down there. I did not grab a big enough piece of yarn to wrap the whole thing, but that's okay. You'll be able to see what I'm doing. So now I'm going to take that tail and drop it through that loop right there. And I want to kind of hold on to it just gently so it doesn't get lost. And I'm going to pull on the top green, th green string that I left there. All right. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but look at that. We're tightening up that loop that we left at the bottom. We're going to pull this and now I can put my hand over the the yarn and look at that we're pulling that tail in the tail is going in and now I've got this nice long bit of yarn here that I can stitch into the bottom of the rose and what that does is it helps to make it a little more firm and it also hides the plastic up here at the top so I, I like to grab all of my, all of my rows kind of with a C of my fingers, kind of push it and keep it up like this. And I'm going to stitch that green. And I'm even going to pick up some of the stitches in that stem. See right here. There we go. There we go. And then go around and pick up some more of the red. Wrap it around a couple times. I'll pick up some more of the, the rows. So you can do this. You can do it as, as quickly or as slowly as you wish. Now I'm going through some of that yarn on the stem again. Ooh, look at that. Now we've got more of a bud or the rose can open. Oh my goodness. That is so pretty. There we go. And now I will bring this through, knot it off, or knot it, I mean, run it around a couple times. And then bury it here in the bottom of the flower and snip that green off. And now I can snip off these bits. I could even make this a shorter rose. As long as I don't cut into my wrapped area here, I can cut this off. And if I was really concerned, I could put a dab of glue down here at the bottom. But look, now we've got another little rose. Vary the heights of your stems. You can get a beautiful, beautiful bouquet. See if the stems are all finished off really nice. Wrap it with some ribbons. You could actually make bridesmaids bouquets. If you were a knitter and you were having a knitted wedding dress, wouldn't this be a beautiful way to make a bouquet in any colors? Oh my gosh. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson, that you like the step-by-step style. And if you did, make sure to click that like button and let me know what you thought of this lesson. What would you do with these roses? I want to know. Let's get a conversation going. We'll talk to you soon. Remember, do something creative, take care of yourself, and be kind out there. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>